tricky, y'all say dick. Tricky? Yeah. Tricky? Yeah. When I say tricky, y'all say dick. Tricky? Yeah. Tricky? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Level Up Cleveland. And this week we have with us Tricky Dick in the cover-ups. That's right. I have with me from left to right Matt Johnson. He is the drummer, and he also does vocals. And I have Doug Schulze. He is the guitar player in the band. He does backup vocals also. I think you guys all do backup vocals, right? Very minimally. (laughs) <laughs> but yes when you have to yes that is when they make right. you when they make me and then i got tony howard tony plays bass and he is the lead vocalist in the band and uh not with us today is jeff harmosis you got it but i bing nailed it Woo! he plays keyboards and he's also another vocalist in the band there's a lot of vocalists in this band um and right you know that's why Probably we've had such a hard time getting these guys on the show, which is why we were recording on a Wednesday night versus a weekend, which is why you're hearing music in the background because we're recording while the bands are actually rehearsing here. But if you think we can get these guys on on a weekend, it's impossible (laughs) Um, when you're playing out all the time. And as these guys were just saying, all new fathers, basically. Yeah. So their lives are so... We, we, we had to come down on a Wednesday night to do it. It's going to be a little noisy in the background, but I right. think we'll be all right. Yep. So oh, thanks, yeah. guys, for coming down. Thank hey, you for having us. Absolutely. So you guys are uh, basically a cover band? There's nothing basic about it. Yeah. We are That's a cover guys, band. Yeah, you're a cover band. <laughs> we are a right? cover band, yes. Thus, thus the name, right? Is that, how, is that, was that how, how I got all mixed into the name? I mean, the cover-up seems like... And who and how does how does Tricky Dick come into this? Right. Whole? I keep saying we got to think of a good story for, yeah, you for do. this, but uh, <laughs> it's gonna because it's very mundane. I mean, we're talking about you know 15 years ago at this point when we were, I was sitting with a couple of guys talking about how we can earn uh, uh, free beer by playing cover songs and nice. you know play CCR songs and things like that. And uh, and as as I recall, it was just kind of like you know when you're sitting around your band and you're like, what should we call ourselves? And everyone's just kind of spitting stuff out. And someone said the cover. The cover-ups for kind of that reason, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cover band, you know, the cover-ups so would be cool. And then I think, as I recall, it was my the lead singer at the time. We're talking like three versions of the band ago. Oh, oh yeah. and he was absolutely the history nerd. Yeah. So it would make total sense. He uh, he was like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, he's like, Tricky Dick, Tricky Dick and the cover-ups. And the tie-in would be like the Watergate thing and all that that happened. Oh. Which now is completely lost on our audiences, who are usually like 35 and under, yes. I'd say. Yes, no, I uh, understand. So they totally, they're like, tri- and you know, but that's kind of where, it, and we're like, yeah, cover-ups, cover band, Tricky Dick, that's really... Tricky Dick's really nice. covered it up. Tricky Dick is, nice. it's provocative, it's it's the D word. Right, yeah. some people, like, it could be like a prophylactic I reference. Thought it was a, that's yeah. what I thought it was, and when I told my family, when I went home for Christmas that year after I had tried out, and I explained the name, and, and they're like, is that like a condom thing? I was like, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I met these guys once, and they I'm too stupid to, to understand the band name, but they let me in anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I looked apart, too, so yep. that works. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are all from different backgrounds, and but you, for whatever reason, you guys decided that 
you would compromise with each other and get along and make this thing work out right from the get go. Right. I mean, there's really, I mean, it's, I don't know if the, the odds of this working the way it has with the group of people coming together and like over 15 years, still like one, just not like hating one another, but secondly, thriving as much as we have is pretty remarkable. And the fact that we all kind of like, we, we do have our separate, you know, interests. We have our own opinions. We have very strong opinions, but somehow we always can kind of peel that back and just say, we know what our collective like North star is. We know what the band should be. Yeah. Um, and that it, we're always kind of able to, as much as it might hurt sometimes, like put our ego aside or put our, our opinion on something aside and just kind of work together and not feel like resentful. Well, we spent it. our entire twenties together, letting our ego control the band <laughs> to some degree so we to a degree i mean but even then we were talking about this the other day like we were i would say certainly when with anything i think when you're younger you're you're a more emotional and more passionate more reactive and like you know you're going to respond in in a different way than when Correct, you're a little yeah. bit older and can kind of think things through but even then like we managed to make it work and i'm sure part of that passion helped like drive us too but we were always kind of like we you know, we always came back to center and we always kind of aligned on what, you know, what the band was going to be and what we should sound like. Because like, OK, well, we want to make money in this industry. You know, we're like Matt said, at first it started as the motivation to get some free beer. But then we were like, you know what, this is fun. And and yeah, we like having original music goals and everything like that. But like um, we're not above compromising <laughs> like right, right. we got something here we we played tight and everything so i was like I mean, we were like we should play pop music you know and then we were like we were doing these things called turbo mega mixes mm. which were like five or six songs and i i came you guys already kind of had that established turbo mega mix one Oh yeah, I could probably tell you three or four <laughs> where there would be songs. like so they're like medleys. They're like a medley of a, songs, yeah. like a fifteen minute medley, and and sometimes they were locked by like genre or era, and sometimes they were connected by like key signature, or sometimes they were connected by logistics, like who's the lead singer for a few, like, and we we carry that sort of like essence like through what we do now, which is like to have as much of a nonstop party as possible. Like there's no better feeling, right? Yeah. You know, when you're like nailing it in a packed room and and like the whole crowd is with you and it's like the band sounds good and everything's just like going, you're like, I got to do whatever it takes to feel this way again, mm-hmm. right? Correct. So that's what yeah. it is. So you guys, so for whatever reason, feel like you all kind of share that same thing and that's why you guys have one common goal. Yeah. So no matter what, you guys can always come back to that common goal. And you know, even if you're like, "Oh man, that song, oh, Jesus," yeah, Christ. we and all that, have but, those but songs. That, yeah. That, but you're like, "All right, I get it," you know, because in some some way you understand that this would be, this song's gonna work out just fine for what you guys do, mm-hmm. and so therefore you guys just shed your egos for a little while for that purpose, which is, you know, as we find doing these interviews, shedding ego is what gives sustain. Right, yeah. you know that's the only thing that'll do it. You know, once that sheds, and these bands feel like the band is bigger than the individuals, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden things happen. Well, I always said I would quit if we ever played country or played weddings. <laughs> Here I am playing country. Fifteen years later, at weddings, we're doing fancy country, like we're doing fancy like at a wedding. Yeah, you know what's funny is those. Uh, I'm not a big country fan, but they tend to be my favorite songs because they are a little more challenging to play and they're they're a little more fun. Well, yeah. Um, Outside your box too, right? I mean, like, yeah, like, definitely. You know, like, and I think that's what you know when it comes to doing cover songs, especially, is that you constantly have to go outside your own box. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you're not in a comfort zone ever because you're playing everyone else's music. Yeah. You're not playing. It's not as if you know when you're writing your own music, it's a lot easier to find your little comfort zone and you kind of write within a lot of that, you know. But when you got to do somebody else's, you know, you might have to do something that's not very comfortable and then learn that, and then you will improve as a musician. And yeah. obviously, if you guys started off, you're like, I was, I didn't even hardly know the drums when I when we first started playing. Now you're playing packed houses, you're playing weddings, you're playing everything else, so you've improved. And I, and I truly believe that the cover thing is one of the best ways to improve as a musician, is oh, to play someone that's else's That's how music. I learned, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's exactly I can right. remember playing, like, like, when we first started playing Hey Jealousy, 
which like and playing that on do 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 ding ding. It's ding, the second ding, time ding, you brought ding, that up, ding. so I was like, that no, was like because a, that's like that's your typical. That's what that's yeah. like one of those cover band songs. It like, is totally like especially you know in in, in you know uh, like cumbersome. Yes, like all <laughs> these all these kind <laughs> of '90s rock songs, which are are right. great. They're, They're fun. That's how awesome. we start. Um, but again, I can remember playing that song and being like winded by the end of it and going, there's no way. There's no way I can do this for 60 minutes. Are it's you a, kidding me? I'm going to die. 60? 60 minutes. Yeah, I mean, we take 15-minute breaks between them. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I was going to say, that's a 60-minute gig would be beautiful, but you guys nah, are doing... We do two 90s typically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's what you guys are doing. So you guys are, you know, and you don't even get really any breaks. I mean, like, you're just playing straight through and just... We, we try. I mean, we're, we're very cognizant of the fact that the people that we play to have, like, attention spans that are like that. That's what Tony was saying. Like, you know, we, we'll do 90 seconds of a song and then move on. We're not going to play, We're you know, depending on the song, we're not going to play the whole the whole thing, and we're going to move on to the next thing because people are going to get bored. Right, right, right. And right. we're probably getting bored, too. So you guys are doing, you guys are doing gigs, bars, whatever, and you're also doing the wedding thing. So... That, those gotta be two t- different gigs, right? Like you can't, you can't. I, I just can't imagine 100%. they're the same. Every, every, I would say every gig is different. We're like the the set we play at a Time Warp Bar in Westlake is going to be different than the set we play at Around the Corner in Lakewood, which is going to be very different from the wedding that we play next. True, week. I, I get that. I mean, we don't want to say any names or anything, but has it ever happened where you guys did a wedding and it just. It just they, didn't go right. Like, my list. The closest thing I can think of, and it wasn't our our issue. Our, it was a, a sound issue. Uh, we were at Windows on the River, and we were mm-hmm. doing a wedding. This was actually one of our earlier weddings, as I recall, because we didn't have our own like sound equipment. We 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 contracted someone to come in, and like every t- we started playing, and like suddenly there was this huge like <laughs> like over the speaker. So we're playing a wedding dance, floor, yeah, like the first and there's five minutes noise yeah. from hell yeah. going on in this thing, and you have to stop then and, and troubleshoot. So now like and thankfully they had a DJ also that was there. To Not be always part the case. The night. No, Sometimes you're ever. in. Uh, yeah. So he was able to just kind of pick it up and keep the party going while the our sound engineer like kind of figured this stuff out, but. Aside from that, and like uh, the occasional baby being born, um, yeah, in the middle of a wedding, like we are, we have a pretty good track record. You had that happen, this guy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, your your baby was born while you were at doing a wedding. It, well, bef- <laughs> before, right before the wedding started, and we got everything set up too. Yeah, everything was set up perfect. I didn't yeah. mean that bride. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm very proud to say that, um, like at this point, and this is like, it, it, you know, every wedding vendor at some point, it just becomes another day at the office. And we're no different. Like we we've done weddings, I think now since 2013. You know, 25 a year. Multiply that out; it's going on 10 years now. So you know, we're in the hundreds of our weddings now. So now it's just like I used to pour over the timeline and everything because I'm the MC, so and I and I work with the bride directly for for weeks ahead. So we have a relationship before I, I get there. Uh, we know smart. what to expect. We, uh, yeah, and 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 this again, there's no disrespect to anybody because it's a, a stressful day and there's a lot to plan and a lot of time the brides kind of get the brunt of the work. They do. They do. So, um, you know, so some of them are high maintenance and some and most of ours, I will we're lucky, are pretty low maintenance because our band is there to throw a party. We're not really buttoned up. Our atti- I understand totally. Our, our attire at the wedding is like your like cousin who's a little bit alternative. You know what I mean? Exactly. We, if they're hiring you, they're, yeah. they're hiring you. They're not going to be real pretentious type people. Yeah. Or they're going to be. That's not what you guys are. Because they saw us at a bar. Yeah. And they exactly. knew that we're going to bring the same kind of energy. energy. They have to sell us to their parents. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. And, the, and sometimes the parents come out see us at Brothers Lounge in Cleveland, or they see us at, uh, yeah, the Time Warp Bar in Westlake, or Wild Eagle in Broadview Heights, or some of these other places that are demographically very varied. You know, and so like bring the parents in, and yeah, we say a few potty words. <laughs> so then you guys got to kind of audition for this, also. At, at, so what you're we're doing always that, auditioning constantly. So nightclubs are, you know, we have a bad night once in a while, sure. Who doesn't? Right. But like we still try to treat it as like high stakes because you never know who's in the crowd, and when we have the the private event thing going on too. You know, we, we're always on audition, like you said. So we have to try to remain, you know, tight. And, and I was saying. You know, the, what we have between the four of us, um, and the four of us have been together for almost 10 years now, right? So the band's been around for 15. To have the same four people in a band for 
Play, five, five years playing is, every single weekend is incredible. Yeah. Practicing but, once or twice a week mm-hmm. every week. So like, th- we spend a lot of time together. I think I rec- you know, I I have to think we recognized early on that we probably had something that was kind of special. We got along great. We had common goals. We like knew where to invest money. We treated other we, each other with respect. Um, kind of. All these things, yeah. <laughs> I, we're so like, like brothers, though. I mean, like yeah. brothers disrespect each other constantly. Yeah. There is like so much shit talking that goes on in the band, but it's all in love, you right. know. Right, it's right. It truly, you know. We we keeps we, us all humble. We as kick well. each other's asses, and we like, yeah, we you know, in, in like publicly in front of each other, but it's truly in love. I mean, it's you know, so we're we're very brotherly in that way. I think. So I think that like you realize that that you have something um, that's that's special. And I think we did realize that like in, you know, 2011, 2012, when we were like going this route and we realized the response we were getting and like, we were like, all right, let's invest in a light show and like, let's take this seriously and see like what we can parlay this into. And so we didn't mention that not only does Matt play drums and sing, he also runs our light show in real time. Oh, so you got you got your, everything's over there. Are you using your sticks too to do that? No. Are you are you like Neil Pert? You got like it's everything ta- set kind of, up it's on, on a tablet. You got everything. Kind of, yeah. He does have he does have electronic pads as well, but he's got a tablet. Yeah, so I'm like holding and I'm just pushing pushing buttons, and it's like it's like a like a lot of things like singing and playing at the same time or playing for 30 minutes at a time. It's just, you learned how to do it because you had to, uh, him being a lead singer, he was never a lead singer. He learned God. how to do it because he, he had to on the fly and yeah. bass, yeah. which maybe, you know, is a little less common, but you know, when, yeah, but you got to split the brain and do both. That's I was the super thing. impressed with people. I saw who could do it. Rich Spino was a guy I would see like, just like nail anything on bass and sing it, you know, he's great. He's awesome. And whatever. And like, there were other guys or, uh, obviously, um, yeah, I, uh, uh, E-Rock, you know, like some of these cats are just great bass players and singing like a bird, you know? And I was like, how do they even do that? Yeah. And it wasn't until I had to. You know, sometimes you just get thrown in the deep end and you force yourself because otherwise the gig's gone. Well, yeah. What and, are we gonna do? The gig's gone. And 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 if you don't do both, you got to pay one more guy. You got to pay more. That's, that's, that's that. the thing. We're able to keep it to four it's people. It's funny you say that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, you want to condense it down to as least amount of people as possible. That conversation yeah. absolutely happened. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you guys, as far as uh, what you listen to and stuff like that today, like right now, what are you guys listening to? What are you What are you jamming? I mean. As far as like, especially like drummers and stuff like that. Who's your influences as far as who you're playing and that kind of thing? Um, um my, my my influences. I mean, like I come from like I said a prog rock kind of thing, uh, which is you know so Neil Peart, uh, Danny Carey from Tool, um, you know those those kind just of just the the two best drummers. Yeah, I can't play just anything close to them. Yeah, that's yeah. not true. But it was like <laughs> you can. But it you was can. like. Those were the guys where I was like, "Oh my god!" Like the the what they could do uh, was inspiring to me creatively. Oh yeah. Um, and but I mean, when I'm just listening to music, I just like like either folksy downer music, just like <laughs> kind of sad minor key Leonard Cohen type oh, really? stuff. Yeah, that's kind of my 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 rainy day. Uh, type music, you know. There's been a lot of rainy days in Cleveland, Ohio lately. Yeah. Especially lately, yeah. say, he's so. getting a lot of play. He's getting a so, lot yeah, of play. I mean, play. it's like two things. I, when I want to hear, like, like be inspired and and feel that power, you know, I go with those those prog, prog rock guys. When I'm just like at my desk or chilling out or something, it's, it's sad Leonard Cohen bummer music. So when someone says, "Who's your favorite band?" You tell them Rush. Would you say Rush? Uh, I would say Tool. Tool. Yeah, Tool. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Very cool. Well, yeah, we're millennials, so that's I guess our prog band. Yeah, that well, well there and there wasn't many well, like no. them. They were yeah. like they were like the prog metal prog they prog were the, yeah. the the band. How about you, man? What's your what's your I'm all over the place, but um I probably trend more heavier seven dust um and uh kill switch engage, but um and then I just saw Slipknot. Um and then but then two weeks before that I went and saw Tame Impala. So really? It's, yeah, it's all over the place. Um, Doug is like the constant. He still goes to concerts like he was a teenager. Oh, yeah. Oh, especially cool. I'm very COVID. jealous. Yeah. Yeah, especially since COVID. I mean, I miss playing, but I miss concerts that much more. And I just saw Sammy Hagar. That was my first post-COVID concert, and I was in tears. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, he I puts on just, a hell of a show. He's a po- yeah, crazy. and then I found out he's 73 the next day. I'm like, yeah. okay, if I ever complain about a backache, like, yeah. fuck <laughs> me. Fuck me. I'm, I'm not even 40. I wish somebody... Uh, fo- uh, um, 
had gotten documentation of you crying at Sammy Hagar. Oh man, I've I'm, I have a history of crying at concerts. First one was Creed in '99. Uh, it was, it was uh, that that one. Anyways, sad, Tony, <laughs> we don't want to. We don't need to, Doug Tom, rehashing his Creed and, memories here. No, we'll be. Here. I don't want to get tears on Let's the microphone. Let's keep this going. What else? What else is happening? How do you feel about soap operas? I'm just kidding. Oh I'm no, but not. I love game shows. Doug's, Doug's a, game so show. I'm I'm over here listening to sad bummer music. Doug's crying over Creed. <laughs> What, I can't what, wait to hear Tony, dude. I can't wait. Well, no, I, I want to um, also acknowledge Jeff can't be here to answer this question. And he's like, he's a few years younger than us. So his entire, um, you know, his entire uh, focus on music is like way different than any of ours. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, I mean, like, like he's a, he's a frequent at like the emo nights oh, yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. you know, like the, the, like the, the, like scene kid stuff. I know that he's going to uh, a concert, uh, thrice in Bayside and he's very excited about that. So those are some of the bands that he's into and he can't represent himself. So. Me and him are going to Limp Biscuit in mid May. Limp Biscuit is oh, not, I can't a- wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Cool. So yeah, Doug, Doug was the new metal guy. I, I did grow up with new metal and, and corn was a big influence on me oh, and yeah. everything like that. But um yeah i mean uh my dad was a bass player and so the the players that influenced him were obviously the ones that sort of influenced me and a lot of the the soul stuff like um stevie wonder's bass player um like nathan east and uh tower power rocco prestia um uh, stanley clark jocko pistorius victor wooten like those were the guys that got me excited but then also i had Les claypool and flea so, like, Les Claypool and Flea were the guys that made me start playing bass guitar. And that was all I ever wanted to do. I just wanted to rock out with a funky drummer or a metal drummer. And, and then I got into, like, Opeth and, like, Arch Enemy and In Flames. And uh, Mashuga is a big... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Mashuga more than anything because I'm, I'm ri- everything is rhythm, right? You know, that's for me. Uh, even vocals, even singing is... Where rhythm. does your, where does your um, inspiration come for being the front guy? Because Tony is an incredible, uh, like he's a lead singer, but he's a front man. Naturally, I mean, like, though, you feel un- is it natural? It's unbelievable the confidence. I mean, just to like to dance and to go up to a crowd member and take him by the hand and twirl. Him. I mean, he has this swag. Where did that come from? That's just me breaking out of my shell at some point because you're holding a microphone like over and over again in my life. Well, who? I mean, like when you're when you think about music in general, who do you, who's the best front man ever? Who's who would you say if someone had to say not not the best singer, not just the best front man, you know? I mean, I mean, let's just narrow it down to the, the there's, there's Jagger, there's Roth, and then Yeah, they're I don't, great. is there anybody else? Those Hagar, those Sammy Hagar, Hagar, Hagar definitely yeah, Hagar. Sammy Hagar. Those guys weren't like my guys. I think of James Brown honestly when I see you. So. That kind of thing. Yeah, like, that's 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 Michael Jackson. Okay, like, so there lead, was like I said, leading the band and just kind of like like being in control of the stage. Being you remember in control of the audience? There was a there was an HBO like Michael Jackson special in the '90s where he was wearing like this gold weird gold like bikini strap on <laughs> thing. Sashay kind of thing. Like, but like it was also like militaristic too. Like, yeah, what the hell yeah. was he wearing in oh, the '90s? Yeah, that's right. Is it, like gold glitter ass weird oh, thing. Yeah. But I loved that concert so much because of, like, his frontman appeal. Like, him and Prince, yeah, James Brown. Yeah, I guess those are the kind of guys that I think about, like the, like, the, like the funk guys and everything. But I don't know. Yeah, like Lady Gaga. Like, I don't know, you know, kind of And whatever. again, like, it's, it's uh, you know, it's not like he... Pop stars. He, yeah. Bruno just, Mars, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, and you're talking 2010, you know, he didn't grow up like saying, I want to be a, a singer, no. a front guy. He just kind of did it, and he was just so, like, natural at it. And well, that's very as sweet. From a, <laughs> well, but it's true, sweet, though. Like, yeah. like, Jeff, Jeff his, he is the secret sauce of this band, okay? Because, like, his keyboard, he has it split up so that it's, like, on his left hand, he's a bass. And oh. then over here, he's got, like, synthesizers, and, like, he can split it up in five different ways. And he has such an ear for, like the perfect execution of any song that we throw at him, any song we throw at him, yeah, so any he t- song. So he makes, you guys are doing all the right stuff, but he makes it all sound. We're just this rock trio Yeah, without oh, Jeff. Yeah. That's, we're, very, that's very true. We're, I mean, if, if he goes away, we, we can play like a hundred songs, but it's a rock trio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys, so you guys are doing a lot of pop stuff, but I don't, I, you know, I haven't really heard you say that that's really what you guys all listen to. So, how do you guys come up with like a, a song that's now more you know newer that's come out? How do you guys know like what songs do you guys have to listen to? This kind of to. forced you. It forces us to, right? I did. We have yeah. to because yeah. yeah, I mean, like how familiar are 
familiar are you with like the current landscape of like pop music? Very terribly. Very not terribly. A, almost zero. Because Wait. it's work. <laughs> you have to make yourself do it. I mean, because the, the generation we are, you know, it doesn't yeah. come naturally for us it's to right. recognize like what's like the new thing that's like that will resonate. And then we also have to think of our rooms. Like it around the corner, Matt mentioned, the the newest song that's out, whatever genre it is, is like what's going to be the thing. Well, do you guys trust yourselves in this department completely, or do you have outside of people that you'll be like, hey, you know, what My are you- wife's pretty good at picking I uh, really? Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, oh, this song sucks. And she's like, well, I have a feeling you'll be playing it in two weeks. And it like, Because the girls like to drink to it. You oh, know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, who's, I mean, aren't, isn't that really your, your main crowd is you play to them because, yeah. like, that's the whole chain. Yeah. You know, if, if the women like you, the men will come. Well, and buy the money, not, buy the drinks. Just, but they're the us. ones who come to the dance floor. Yeah. Exactly. They start, that's what you're, that's what you're really all about. That's what you're about is, is, to create that whole dance scene. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's the only thing that you guys are really looking at is dancing, right? We want it to be a kick-ass party. Yeah. Yeah, seldom, unless, unless it's, has it ever been too packed for people to dance where you there, guys are just some uncomfortable at it? times, definitely. Has there been? Once oh, in yeah. a while. Yeah. They, they figure it out, though, the people, they got tables. Yeah. yeah. They get up on the tables. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, right? people just- You do up, what you got to do. Yeah. It ends up being, like, a lot of times, just like a, a concert where people are just, like, you know, they're right up, right up on you and if they're not dancing because it's so close that they're screaming along yeah we play some festivals where it feels like that kind of atmosphere where yeah some some of the under the tents can get a little ridiculous but if we have a killer dance floor i mean that's when it's like really happening for us oh yeah that's what you're all about so have you guys created a, a a situation for yourselves now where this is your job or or do you guys all have other jobs that you have to go to also or does everybody have a different scenario kind of played out yeah yeah a little bit everyone's a little bit different in that regard um i have i have a day job uh doug does real estate jeff uh has a couple houses that he he rents out and maintains and is a landlord and then tony's a a stay-at-home dad and he did work for uh cleveland music group for a while as well so um we were you know the we did this full time for about 18 months for the summers of 2014 and 15 that was like the big that was the big thing for the for the band. It was during that time we all quit our jobs and we hooked up with a, an agency on the the East Coast to put us in Dewey Beach, Delaware, and uh, Jersey Shore, and all these crazy places. And that was the time, you know, right as we were at the end of our twenties and everything, when we were like, "All right, let's give it a let's give it a go and just see what this is all about." So, um, other than that, right now it's just it's a nice kind of uh, side hustle that we've managed to turn into something that's. You know, some extra change and a good time. It's a lot. It's a lot of extra change, though. You guys, you guys, you guys are big time. I mean, you guys aren't little. You guys aren't going in there and charging three hundred dollars for a gig anymore. You want tricky dick? You paid a big bucks. That's right. You got to. <laughs> well, you you have and to. Better have cold beer. <laughs> You'll work cheap. So I like. You know, he's yeah. like he's like yeah yeah. Well, you know, yeah. it's a beer cold. Low standards, <laughs> beer cold. You you read that from him already? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love it. Yeah. Yeah, he'll show up and play guitar for free because he gets to play guitar and drink beer. No, do you guys, just, do you mean, guys have rules about that though? Do you, do you make for yourselves like where you guys are like, well, everybody we, has their own tolerance, and I'm, you guys I don't. Just you guys to be astronomical. Nice. Well, that, not just I'm not really talking about that, but like, you know, don't show up to the gig fucked up. Oh, that kind I of think thing. that goes without saying. So everybody's kind of like very responsible <laughs> in that way, though. It's like we said, like about the the stakes of every gig are always high because you just never know who you're playing for. Correct. And and we all. We feel a sense of failure as individuals, uh, you know, and 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 with responsibility to one another and with respect to one another. If some, if if you have a bad night, we all have a bad night, because you know it's like, yeah, if I'm losing lyrics because I've had one too many, and or you know, Matt is like dropping sticks or whatever, which like doesn't happen anymore because you're how many months sober or how many years sober? Uh, I stopped drinking yeah, like two years ago. Two years sober. Nice. You know, so congratulations, man. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, you know, whatever it is, it's like if one of us, you're only as strong as your weakest member, right? Uh, Truth. That's, that's something like when I've realized somebody's even having a technical difficulty, whether yeah. sober or drunk, and even a technical difficulty, I can't concentrate because I'm trying to think how we can. The expectation the is that we're perfect. It yeah. never is, but you know, even if it's not, it's the perception because even technical, yeah. technical difficulty, being pretend too drunk, like it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, I, well, yeah, never, never, never show, never let them see you sweat, right? Well, that's, you, the, that's not well, how they not say. Me, We've but. been to gigs. How many gigs have you been to, even if it's a cover band, where you see, like, the guitar player, like, yelling at the drummer for missing the cue or whatever? It's yeah. like, you Makes see a scene. It. 
You so it's it. one thing that there was a mistake made. Now there's a scene. Yeah. And now everybody that 99% of them that never even knew you made the mistake, now they all know. The vibe yeah. changed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. So we try to push through that stuff. And once in a while, we because we play so much material. We play 80 songs a night. 80 to 90 songs a night. That's crazy. But you guys don't play full songs, right? right? You guys are just playing pieces of songs to make one 90-minute song. We just started doing really, like, right? We, Essentially, right. That's awesome. We man. intro the set with like Final Countdown, you know. But we only play through the triplet. <laughs> Big ending. <laughs> Whatever the next song is. Two, three, four. Let's get it started by the Black Eyed Peas. Whatever. You know. Nice. If you guys are talking to your cousin or something there and they're curious about your band and that kind of thing and you're like and you're like, dude, this one time. <laughs> Like, what would that one-time thing be? Is there anything where you... I mean, I, I can... I mean, talking about put in bay specifically, like, we really... We cut our teeth to a degree at, at put in bay and, like, that was... That felt like the apex um, when we were first starting. Like, if we could get at the roundhouse, yeah, like, yeah. that's 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 it. We would have reached the pinnacle of cover band world. It's yeah. the Key West of... I mean, it's not, yeah. it's not nothing at And all. so we'd go out there and it's we'd play... Deal. You know, we play five shows in in three days. We'd be playing the afternoon show and the night show, just like always doing it. So I mean, with the light show, yeah, yeah two uh, to six, nine to one, three hour break. So yeah, you're getting up. you're getting messed up there, <laughs> and and you're trying to take a nap or and a shower. You know, yeah, just to kind <sighs> of work through it. But it's a job at that point. Heads. I mean, that's real mm-hmm. work at that mm-hmm. point. You oh. guys are. You guys are waiting. When you first start that that first gig, you guys are just thinking about, wow, we got a long road out of us. I never felt like that. I always never. That didn't bother me. But if I had to go and play two three hour shows now, it would be it would be rough. I had to sing through all that though. It's it's a little different when you're using your body as an instrument for like hundred percent six to seven hours a day. With yeah, with with some breaking and getting royally drunk sometimes in between. You know, it's like, yeah, just 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 treating your body like uh, trash, you know, which, again, <laughs> I was in my 20s. Right, you know? you're not doing anything that's, that's yeah. beneficial to the fact that you're a singer. No, I, I would know because I'm like, you know, like Doug, I'm like incredibly attracted to people and to social and to like the party aspect of being in a band. Right. right. You know, so like sure. a lot of the reason I started playing in a band in the first place is because it got me in to social situations. Right. You know, so yeah. So, uh, yeah, but, but you, you learn somehow to dig deep with every single song somehow, you know, like you have to convince yourself I'm feeling fatigued, but you know what? Like you're not going to get anywhere by, by failing right now. Well, right. a good crowd, you know, you feed off the energy. So, and even yeah. if it's a bad crowd, you have to figure out a way oh, yeah, to, to play like it. they're a good crowd and like, act like, yeah, that's, it's that's, hard. Well, that's, you can turn it around. You have to you, you try. can you can turn it around you have though. To try. Yeah, you can, what starts off bad doesn't have to end bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's all about like yeah, changing your internal dialogue while the song is like I'm singing words, but I'm also having other thoughts in my head that are related to like how's it going. Mm-hmm. Isn't isn't it weird like why why some things sometimes things go bad really makes no sense like like sure. like literally there's really no one thing different about this versus anything you else. You can't but, pinpoint it, but God, you're trying. Isn't it weird? It's like it, it, it literally does give give credence to the whole energy thing, right? Like sometimes when you walk into a, a, a place like that, it, there's just a certain energy going on for whatever reason. It's already there. It's and the you guys thing. are just kind of walking into it. Yeah. And then no matter what you guys do at that point, it just it's not going to work sometimes, and it's yeah. weird. It happens. And you guys are pretty like – you guys are, are, are on your game. You're on your A game all the time. It's going to be hard for you guys to come in and just fall flat on your faces. It's going to be tough to do at this point with you guys playing. You know, you guys aren't just practicing. You guys are gigging. That's that's when you tighten up, and that's when mm-hmm. that's when you become a force. Well, we've been gigging, yeah, since like 2009. Yeah, <laughs> like every weekend. February '09. Like, yeah, we had the only the year we took off was 2020 by necessity. Oh, wait, yeah. was it eight? It was oh wait, 2008 was our first. 2008. But, but, yeah, yeah, the only year we've ever taken off is 2020. Yeah, it was COVID. COVID. So, what is a practice at this point? Is it really more like new t- songs? Yeah, just just, just go and go, songs, just yeah. uh, introduce them. So you guys, you guys just communicate. Uh, when you're not, t- you know, Through hey, email. this uh, be ready for, to do this. Email. You learn this. Is that what you guys do? Everything's email. email. Hundred emails a week at least. Oh, no you can't learn emails, dude. Yeah. So you guys constantly got to learn new stuff, or or, yeah. or we don't. Constant, we huh? not, we don't not, gotta, gotta, we, we do. want to. Yeah, we definitely. We learn three, four new songs a week. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Some are throwbacks. <laughs> 
we just learned shot through the heart and you're too yeah. We just learned you give love a bad name. Like we just didn't we have. We just it. learned that song. We're learning like, we, it, but, and yeah, we have wedding season coming up. So like, we're yeah. gonna be like, all right, what can we like? Where's some Motown? We don't have a yet. wedding song that we can play, or mm-hmm. what's the number one song on the Billboard charts right. right now? You know, and we'd give that a shot. We're doing know? Olivia Rodrigo, and you know, like contemporary, uh, you know, uh, Hot 100 Billboard stuff, as well as like throwbacks, 80s, 90s. I mean, like literally everything. Find but other slow songs and wonderful. It's tonight. it's really stupid because like right. Jeff who <laughs> Jeff who often does our set list uh, creation for every single week and the expectation is a brand new set every single week. Like we do not do the same order of songs either, simply because every room is different and we mm-hmm. want it to be a different experience for our fans. You know, and us and us and yeah. because yeah because we want well, plus to- there's people seeing you guys multiple times too. You don't want it to and see the, the same, same weekend. Show. And then, and then the word gets out that it's the yeah. same show, and then no one, st- everyone stops seeing your show, right? I mean, that's yeah, kind of how it works. Staying that. fresh is everything. You guys, are, yeah, but we're yeah we're we're over the top, you know. It sounds like, like it. I mean, that's a lot. It's Three ambitious. to four a week. It's is ambitious. ambitious. We, and, and yeah, we we've probably like learned and discarded more songs. Than, a thousand. Than, I mean, it's, yeah. because you'll learn a song and, and it's new, so you hope you'll play it for. A few months at least, but oftentimes we might play it a, a show or two, and yeah. either the audience isn't feeling it, or it wasn't the song we thought it was going to be, or whatever. And they say, "Okay, well, like you go away." You yeah, I was just gonna say, like, the some one. songs only got a a, a few week shelf life, and they're done. You know, like yeah. you're in and you're out. There's and like, I, yeah. and I think a lot of bands, and this is not to disparage anybody else, but oh, yes, it's like. It is. Yeah. I think a lot of fans <laughs> name names. This well, is Tony speaking right now, and, and not our, me and ourselves included. And we because we've done this, I right, have gone like Good you know safe. what we're we're going to we're going to just I, we're going to skip this one because it has such a short shelf life, and I can just feel it. You know, sometimes you just know, but we'll we'll do that stupid song. For like two weeks. What the fuck says. Yeah, and I mean, we'll what play the all the, say? you know, we'll play, I, I mean, to me, like, the, the, the harder, I, I'd love to play it, What the Fox Say, compared with, that like, would be funny. Don't Stop Believing, or, like, yeah. some of these songs, the like Jesse's Girl. Is that, like, so, the ones that you can't stand to play anymore? I mean, be honest. I yeah. love playing yeah. Don't Stop Believing. I, I can't stand it. But, I mean, it's okay, like, because people people dig it. So, I mean, when you're in there and you're playing it, you're not saying, yeah. well, the song I isn't- hate this song, right. I can't wait till it's over, because you're in it and people are digging it. Yeah. But, like, you know, and I I'm sitting here and I'm going, Ugh, you know, Jesse's girl, semi charmed. You know, when you know it's coming it, up, I know you're, you're like, some, hey, when you know again, it. but uh, we find ways to freshen it up. Like I'll put like a disco beat behind, like that's the uh, thing, your love or something, and make no it thing. like a little bit more fun. So is that, is that yeah. another thing? You guys don't, you guys don't necessarily go all out to try to make yourself sound exactly like the, no, the, the artist or whatever. It's going to be your rendition, but it's going to be you're going to. It's just the idea is the vibe that you guys are creating, I think right? Jeff, and like, that really sort of the keeps whole... the cohesiveness yeah. of the original song and then yeah. the rest of it is stuff uh, that we sort of change if, around. If there's something that makes the song special, unique, mm-hmm. Jeff has that. And yeah. he's really good at nailing that. And then we can sort of, again, be just like a rock trio behind that. You're a power trio, and then you, yeah. have, and then you have this keyboard over top just, of everything that just kind of smooths everything yeah. all out. It's the secret makes sauce. It, makes it everybody know yes. what the hell this is yes. and what the hell that is. It's why we can do like Rihanna. And like you know, just like out of the out of the box pop stuff, like whatever hip hop song you've ever heard, like you know Cardi B, like we could do that stuff because he holds it down as far as like the texture and the tones of like that style. He always nails that, and then we can just be like kind of a heavy rock band. I mean, we're pretty, we're kind of heavy. Yeah, you are. You're, I know you're, I am. Yeah. Well, it's just it's like it's like the stuff dries. popped on heavy is what it's yeah. kind of like. It's, it's kind of like, popped on heavy. But How he holds down those weight? tones on the keyboard that like just like I mean again his his ear is impeccable. So we're we're very and it and fast. He comes to like practice not prepared. Sorry, Jeff, but he'll figure it out in like five minutes because <laughs> yeah. he's a freak of nature. Oh really? Yeah. So he's a, what? He, would you? So you, are you guys telling me he's the most gifted musician oh. in the band? Well, oh, hands I'd down, say by far. Oh, oh, by far. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's the guy with, like, perfect pitch. He would probably say perfect-ish. So you guys found the pot of gold with this guy when you Kinda, found him. Yeah. Well, because just to find a keyboard player that, that's going to – I mean, that's just a feat in And itself. is a good performer, too. Well, that, that doesn't want to – you know, pigeons hold themselves into an Elton John thing or no. or something like that. They're, he gets out on the lead vocals and like sings. You know, it's a keyboard player. You know, and it's so yeah. He's like definitely the the missing link that has kept this thing going for a decade plus now. Like yeah. I said, it's like the, you know that's 
the odds of of all this working like the four of us working together like and having the musical pieces with like the personalities and the approach and the thoughtfulness and everything and the attention to detail the the odds are are yeah. you know, ridiculous well, against how do you guys get a gig on on the islands per se i mean how does that work out you can't just go and ask for one i mean you guys you have to at least establish yourselves but how does how does like how do they know who you are uh because yeah. we were playing at that put in bay bar in lakewood and then duff made a recommendation then he she wouldn't she's like who are these guys so i kept calling and there was a bunch of things that sort of work so doug would make a really good politician or cia agent because it's all about just having this like charismatic personality like matt said earlier doug is sort of the catalyst originally for a lot of this stuff of uh you know he's he makes friends with everybody very easily he he's gone to concerts constantly he's out in the world he's like i can't stay home i can't stay home i can't stay i'm home. a man of the people he's a man of the people <laughs> quite true so uh yeah the people need doug he's been the engine i think really God. he's been the, he's really been the spiritual center of the band well, since thank the, you since the very beginning the motor it sounds like you're like really? the guy the guy out there the guy out there making it you know like oh yeah you can be as great of a band as you want it but if you are not out there doing the things to oh, get yeah. people to see you yeah. no i mean whenever i'm having a night off i gotta go see other bands That's yeah what i like to do he are keeps... you guys always looking for places to play too is that is that something else or are you guys now kind of like you're always looking for your stable yeah we kind of we kind of have like a good uh stable of of places that we have good partnerships with. So you guys um, are just doing like a rotation through all these things, yeah, basically? We only have so much time, you yeah. know. Yeah, and there are only so many weekends. Uh, so, you know, you, you kind of pick the places that are that you think are um, good good for the band. Like they're going, you know, you can draw people there and they're going to have a good audience. Um, they're going to lead potentially to other, other gigs. People are going to see you there and want to book you for their you know, their corporate event or their wedding or whatever. So you guys are just constantly, that's that's just the thing that I think makes you guys work. It's just constant. Inertia. Non-stop. Like everything you do is about the next step. Always. It's like you're never just ever satisfied with right this second. It's like, all right, that was cool. Now what are we doing now? Now what are we doing now? <laughs> now what are we doing now? Now what are we doing now? Like, yeah. like, like, but that's, that's the secret. That's the secret. I mean the the yeah, and that's what it was like when you're talking about put in bay and stuff. Like the the drive was always to kind of reach this point where like you know you were you were making money and reaching people and doing doing this thing, and it like gives you a natural high, and you're constantly chasing um, that feeling. And I mean put in bay, you know Doug was saying you know, we had a contact at a bar who who happened to know someone on put in bay island. Uh, and got us that phone number. I mean, it was it was really something like that. And then once you get your foot in the door, you get a shot at a yeah, gig. Yeah, like, and, and that's you why you're that's it. why you're playing. Yeah. That's why you're like they call you up and they say, "Well, we need you to play five shows in three days." You know, and you're like, "Sure, uh, sign me up. We'll do it." And, and you're playing whatever they they ask because you want to make um, a great impression. So like, just give give us that opportunity. It's like lying on your resume a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you just you just want to like get in there and try. And then once your foot's in the door, you make it happen. Yeah. 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 So but that's, that's what you guys do though. I mean, when you think about it, that's what you do. You play for the drunks. I mean, that's yeah. That's your audience is is the is alcohol are, pays the our drunker the better. I pays mean, pays our really. salary. That's I will why. say this though. My like I we play all the clubs and you know, that's they're they're fine. Like I I kind of like enjoy those gigs and then I go, I go home, but I do enjoy like the weddings more because I, I feel like they are truly invested in the same way that the stakes are higher. If you fuck up, like I get more fulfillment out of that because you know, like they are going to reflect on that day and just be like, Oh my God. Like everyone still talks about tricky dick at my wedding. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah They yeah. still bring it up to this day. Um, and you know, you don't quite get the same thing. You know, people are like having a good time at the, at the clubs and everything. Um, but it's more meaningful to me to play those type of shows where you know that there's going to be an impression and they're going to kind of remember. So remember you guys are that. creating a memory that that's instead of just the, the, 
150 people that probably won't remember. <laughs> what oh, there's people at weddings that definitely won't remember. <laughs> yeah, either. that's true too. Dude, you should yeah. see some of these whiskey. people. Whiskey. Uh, yeah, it's that's the thing. It's a free whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Man, we see some people trying to do the flopping fish thing on the floor. Man. Well, you guys are going to do some dancing and stuff. Mm. I danced the whole time. Yeah. Do you guys ever sync it up? Uh, <laughs> we've tr- we've tried to get Doug to do it. Yeah, though. we try, but that's Doug, like him and him and like during uh, what is it? Ice Ice Baby. You do like the slide step, yeah. and you and like you, him and Jeff, our keyboards, will do it. Yeah, and we tried to get Doug to do it. <laughs> it didn't. I'm like cool. biting my tongue. Me and Jeff do a little bit on like Insync's <sighs> Bye Bye Bye, and like yeah, and an Ice Ice Baby, like, a little bit. Typically, of, typically we're we're not. Going but to I danced that. enough for the four of them combined. Yeah. Did you do you guys? Did you always know how to dance, or is that did you is actually? That goddamn Michael Jackson special from 1995 <laughs> where he wore the gold I'm gonna weird have to watch swimsuit. That. I watched that too, and I'm a terrible dancer, so it didn't. <laughs> Didn't have nearly the effect on me that what it had on him. Man, and you guys, he's got a, a great excuse. Drummer. He's sitting down. He doesn't. He can't. <laughs> yeah, you can't I, dance. He I, even said when we were trying to teach me stuff, here's a few times like I would dance too, but I, I have to play drums. Yeah. I'm like, Fuck you. <laughs> Easy excuse. Yeah. I really want to dance, guys. I really do. <laughs> I, would, I would love to be. I, I've only I've only stepped outside and done front man stuff for like three songs. That's ever. true. Yeah. I forgot. Just Christmas. a couple like wonderful wonderful Christmas time by Paul McCartney <laughs> with yeah. my. Sleigh bells, and I'm not kidding. I played that song, and Doug was on like I was playing kick kick, drum. Brian, Just Brian, <laughs> wonderful Christmas time. Thumbs up or thumbs down? It's not my favorite. It's all right, <laughs> I'm all just right. gonna go with that. But but if well, you guys did, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's I'll ba- go with that. Most people would be. I mean, most people would rank that right up at the top of the most annoying, <laughs> annoying Christmas annoying. songs. Annoying. But there's a certain charm, charm to it. I kind of like that, it that, actually. that I that I like. So that I can remember being out for that one in Galway Girl. Paul McCartney can kind of do than no that, wrong for me. Honestly, I'm behind the drum kit, and I don't. And you like it there? I'm quite happy there. Yeah, I'll I'll be behind the drum kit even when we're not playing. I'll just be like. You know, for a lot of the the same the same reasons. Otherwise, I'll get caught up with a, some sort of chatterbox who's had a couple whiskey sours. And <laughs> wants to talk whiskey. drums. I don't want to talk about drums at a show. <laughs> Are you? They'll be, they'll be like, "What kind of kit do you play?" Or like, a, I don't care. I don't think any like, of us I, like I, talking about sure. that. What me and Matt kind of are kind of me and Matt are kind of the same. Like, I honestly don't give a shit what bass I'm playing on because it's about your fingers and your heart. Yeah. More than it is the gear. Like I'm not a gear guy. Doug's a total gear guy. I am. <laughs> and Jeff, what do you play on? What's your What's your? I've got 27 guitars. Yeah, but what's your like? You got one. Well, I would say the most. My most it'd be Paul Reed Smith. I have a Paul Reed Smith addiction. I have many of those seven, eight, nine, something like that. Addiction. You have seven. Just of that. Just the. Just many, that brand. How many guitars you 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 got? And it's like 27. I think. Nice. Yeah. Don't t- don't be like like I think. I know it's twenty seven. <laughs> it's twenty seven. Lead singers. What? Are, how many mics do you got? I have a lot. Oh really? Oh yeah. yeah right. You want to know? I, these are all mine. <laughs> well, I mean, I can, but I have I have a lot of microphones. Funny. Okay, lots. I have a lot of splash cymbals. <laughs> you have a lot of. You shit. have a various cymbals. I stack. I love everything. stacking my cymbals. I, our it's sound engineer thing. is a uh, is a drummer too. He's really he's. Fantastic. Shout out drummer. Kyle Clemens. Kyle's the best, man. Between Home and Serenity. I heard it was awesome. It was a, it was a nice sentiment. I heard it was great, awesome. Great, they great got show. Signed. Great they got show, signed. guys. It was awesome. Anyways, Kyle, I, I'm always like, Kyle, look at this, the cymbal stacks I'm doing tonight, man. I got like an eight inch splash <laughs> on top of my crash. And I got like is there a lot of it here. just for the visual of it? You oh, love, of you love the way it looks and everything? It does Our look set sick. list is never the same, and his cymbals are never the same. Never. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you, oh you like to set your drums up a little different? Oh, yeah. oh it's my every, favorite. Every night. It's every night. Different. I like the high the high one you do every once in a while. It's just insanely high. He like, almost has to stand up to hit splash. it. <laughs> just to be a dick. I love it. I love it. I love it. Ding. That's the shit that gets me going. Yeah, what's yeah, your I, what's the one that you just think that's that's the one that I'm most proud of? Oh man, probably uh the the headlining gig we did at House of Blues on Indians opening night. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because that was just like a big event and it was one of the we were we were the only band, I think, on the bill uh, mm-hmm. for that one. So like it was people were coming to see us. They had to get their tickets to see us. And like it was a rocking night and our families were there and it was like, you know, it was just it was a very proud moment, I think, to to do that that piece to play that room under those circumstances. I mean, I would love to do I, I we've got to do a 15 year thing next year like at yep. House of Blues or something. Uh because I agree. because I think we could that would be like the next pinnacle for me. That yeah. would be kind of be like the you know, the 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 
not the swan song because we're not ending, but you know what I mean? Like it would be like a stamp that just says, man, after 15 years to play House of Blues and have a great turnout with our friends and fans and family. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the gig, I think, for me, like if I had to pick one, the, a really proud moment. Real quick, I'm going to ask you guys the same question, but we're going to run out of time here pretty soon. So what was your pinnacle? Game? Oh, um, we played with Biz Marquis. But that was just okay. Huh. Um, I know we had some. Uh, there's just been some really cool nights at, at the Roundhouse. Like when you have a whole crowd singing "Doug sucks, we're gonna kill you." That's always a good time. <laughs> but they mean it in jest and they mean it in That's, love. That's like Primus sucks cool. type thing. It's yeah. the Primus sucks type thing. Well, it all yeah. comes down to having a charismatic uh, front man. And so, like you know, my my job is in between songs. <laughs> Rather than having awkward banter uh, to lead the crowd in some kind of chant, because, you know, chants, it's easy, whatever. So, yeah, Doug sucks. We're going to kill him. Doug sucks. We're going to kill, kill him. Me. Yeah. Now, you know. People be holding signs. Oh, lights. man. You know, Doug it's, sucks, it's 2022. I don't know if we can get away with that kind of thing. It's, you know, it's like we're trying not to be so aggressive. Uh, whatever. Um, yeah. So so what's yours, Tony? Doug, Doug went with the, the roundhouse is the pinnacle. Okay. Well, you, right. said there's a few of them. Few of them well, but, yeah. yeah. Was that like Dewey Beach? I mean, that was cool that we actually were able to step out of our comfort zone and do that for two summers in a row. Well, and, and like to contextualize. Dewey Beach, what does that mean? So, like, in that area of Jersey City, Dewey Beach, Philadelphia, it's, like, it's hard to describe how uh, the, the, um, the, the climate of cover bands and entertainment in general is just elevated. These are million-dollar grossing bands. It's like yeah. Vegas. Yeah, they are playing. Wow. They are making. They are, they are doing this, and they've got, I it's said, like 20, West. Tw if we spent $20,000 on a light show, they spent $100,000 oh, oh, oh. easily, easily. Video. Everything is five times bigger. Every yeah. band. Wow. Sales, yeah. I mean, to go, I think what you're getting at is to go there from a band from Cleveland and kind of – Perform on those stages and hold or from our the own. Midwest. Yeah, hold our general. own. Yeah, that's that was a good way to put yeah. it. Is we held our you own. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We, we held our own, but we learned that the the amount of investment is way bigger out there. Every band oh, yeah. is represented. You guys went swimming with the big dogs, and we then and swimming. realized that you guys realized that big. you were not as big as even you guys probably even thought oh, you yeah. were. It's they have a humbling. rotating cast. Humbling, though. right? So you have a band, uh, but oh, you can get a new member a year. Yeah. So they go on forever. So then the the band name can be going for forty years because yeah. they're managed. Yeah, so, you exactly. Know, yeah. So we've always been self managed, um, and and yeah. So yeah, we 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 could hang with the big dogs, but also like the big dogs were real big, and we learned a right. ton, right, and right, we were right. able to like apply that to this market. Yep. Here at home, bring it home. So, um, yeah, I don't know what my favorite gig was. I, I I guess I could I could I could give a generalized answer in that you know Matt alluded to it it's that like for me it's like the wedding circuit for me is so fulfilling as a person because um you know getting to know these people who have uh decided to to, to trust you for their very 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 important day yeah every single wedding is a big freaking deal and I treat it like that and so I guess uh you know for me getting to the point where I get to participate in somebody's uh, event like that it it's it's definitely very meaningful to me so and the cheese trays the meat and cheese trays at the <laughs> weddings oh my god cookies too it's a really good free Ooh, meal sometimes cookies. they get some really good brisket oh or like god. yeah we can't beat that part when's our next wedding dude Sorry, the worry, perks man. are nice yes all right well you guys uh get a chance to uh go crash a wedding you guys hear Tricky Dicks playing it? That's the one to go to, right? I mean, that's I would like if you're going to gonna crash a wedding, like it's happened before. Like, yeah, our, yeah. I the mean, wedding, the, the Tricky Dick people show up at the you're gonna, if you're gonna a Tricky Dick <laughs> wedding is the one. To that's do great. It. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up, guys. Thanks for coming down. Thanks this was a good us. one, man. A lot, a lot of, of fun. fun talking to you guys. I'm you sure too. everybody out there now knows who you guys are. Yeah, they know who you are now. They're not just what you guys are doing on stage. And yeah, I know that's great. It's cool. All right. We're out. Level awesome. Up Cleveland is out of here. Thank you, Bri. Thank you. Bye-bye. That'll be fine. <laughs>